Hey, we're live. Let's wait for people to get in here. I'm get my mic set up here. Are you live? I'm live. It's 20 seconds and nobody's in yet. So just give us a minute. Because I tried clicking in and it just keeps giving me the video unavailable from the previous video. Hey. We can hear you, Jamie. Just can't see you. Yeah, so here's the deal. Oh, man. I've got... Uh, am I on speaker, Jamie? Okay. Oh, yeah. Put Quiet down the YouTube. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Um... And there's only eight of you, and it's going to be weird, but who cares because we're all drinking tonight. Um, so YouTube changed their uh, guidelines. We've usually been doing it through uh, Google Hangout. Uh, they got rid of their YouTube Live October 31st. So we can't do it together. So Jamie is here next to me. You can see his face if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we'll be able to hear him but uh we won't be able to see him he's gonna look at the chat and everything and respond with everybody i'll give him his chance to talk and all that too but you're just gonna see my face you'll be able to hear jamie jamie uh, we've already got from toto jojo band what are you drinking tonight because we need it this has been a shit show to start off here a Moscow Mule? You're going hard yeah. liquor. Good for you. Yeah, I don't do beer anymore. Beer does not agree with me, so I'm, uh, I strictly the hard stuff. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I'm drinking um, – I, I always drink this. Jamie always sees me drinking this. This is the uh, Tony Gwynn beer, 394. Padres went brown, so I thought I'd buy a six-pack and uh, drink it while we're doing this. I'm going to post yeah, this. Out, huh? I know. Uniforms look good. Oh, man, I love the uniforms. They look great. Thank you, Josh, on 200 episodes. Appreciate that. Uh, it's only fitting that on 200 episodes, we've got maybe the uh, worst quality. Everything, <laughs> Everything went wrong. <laughs> We're supposed to have guests on today, and it uh, doesn't look like that's going to happen either. So here we are. <laughs> um uh so yeah i don't jamie you any any reason why you want to talk about that game today the uh not the game going on well yeah we want to talk about the game going on today rather than the one that went on thursday i'm actually not watching the game at the moment it's not on yet right no it's not but would you rather preview the seahawks 49ers than the review the charger game <laughs> anything is better than the way the chargers played on thursday yeah I'm just getting everything up, guys. So bear with me. I'm just uh, I'm I'm doing other stuff. So Jamie, uh, what what's your plan for the rest of the night tonight? What what kind of night are we looking at? We're 22 uh, minutes in, and we finally got it up. It's been frustrating. What are we gonna do? Well, I guess we can celebrate 200 the 200 show and. Um... If people really want to hear us talk about the Raiders game, we can talk about the rest of the season. We can talk about whether we think Rivers is done. We can talk about whether we think it's time to tank, burn it down for Burrow, or hang in there for a, to run the table and try to try to win the division. Uh, there's lots of ways we can go. I guess. What does everybody else want to hear? Well, it looks like. Uh, hey, it's T Man says bus for Burrow, so he's with you. <laughs> what, is, what does everybody else think? What, is everybody still in the boat that they can run the table, or are we starting to feel like we're looking at another eight, eight, nine, seven season, and we're gonna we're gonna waste another opportunity to draft pick here? What do you think, Eric? What What do I think that? 
that they should do right now. I'm trying to post this stinking link in the in the article right now. So I'm like half listening to you, half trying to figure this whole thing out. Um, I don't know. It's a what do I want to happen? I'd I'd like for them to tank the season and draft a tackle, but that's not going to happen. Um, and uh, and Burrow would be a lot of fun. I'd I'd love for that to happen, but that's not going to happen. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. What a, What about you? Of course. It, why are you asking me questions? I'm trying to get this thing up. <laughs> you answer the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think they'll be anywhere near that. Um, I think they'll be close to a top ten pick. Well, they are right now, but I don't think they're close enough to get Burrow. What about you? I think they'll probably do what they always do and finish with somewhere between seven and nine wins, not quite make the playoffs, and wind up in the middle of the pack here. I have to hope that somebody falls with them like, like uh, Derwin did a couple years ago last year. Seems like that's their thing. So yeah. kind of prepare for it. All right. Let me catch up on these comments here. Toto Jojo says it's too tall of an order to run the table. Uh, Joshua says the Raiders game playoff outlook, some type of optimism. It's a stretch. Burrow was ridiculous. He was ridiculous. If they beat the Chiefs, they have to try to run the table. But if not, they should tank. That's uh, uh, probably a pretty good point. I think at this KC game is when you're going to start knowing where you're at. Don't you think? How is Jamie coming through? Can you guys hear him okay? I'm going to ask once and I won't ask again. Do you think that Rivers is in decline? Yeah, we hear him good. Thanks, Nathan. Um, what do you think about Rivers in decline? Uh, I think Rivers, I mean, we've, we've been talking about it for a couple of years now. I think there are signs of a decline. Um he, I thought on Thursday in particular, he was not handling pressure well at all, uh, holding on to the ball longer than he normally would. He was having a hard time delivering the ball with moderate pressure in some cases, pressure that we're used to seeing him kind of sidestep and slide, make a good throw. And he was throwing balls flat-footed, making bad decisions. It seemed like we saw a lot of that chuck and duck kind of rivers that we've seen in the past. So kind of scary seeing that um, – seeing that from him in that situation against a team that you'd expect them to be able to handle those four and five man rushes and get the ball out of his hands. And they just couldn't do it. And he couldn't handle it. So yeah, I think there's some decline there. I think he's been taking a lot of hits and just struggling. Um, kind of disappointing to watch kind of hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with, you know, a minute left and they just got to go down and kick a field goal and went completely over on that last drive. That was frustrating. Yeah, even you know, even before that last drive, you, you look at the picks he threw in the first quarter. Um, the one that he threw, I mean, the one that he threw to Henry wasn't really his fault. Henry fell down. Um, not really all on Rivers, but the second one that he threw, the one that where he overthrew Keaton, he had a little bit of space to step up, but he threw it flat footed, threw it high, it sailed on him, completely missed his man. You normally when you got a receiver that wide open, you would expect Rivers to hit it and hit him and he just didn't he didn't find him and he was off by a mile and there were a lot of throws like that that were just they just weren't on point they just weren't good and um it was like i said it's kind of alarming he looks like he's gun shy at times and then on that last drive he just looked like a guy who wanted to get the hell off the field 
tired of getting hit, didn't want to take any more hits, just throwing the ball, you know, off his back foot, slinging it in the coverage, throwing prayers downfield, trying to win it on one throw instead of being the veteran that he is and taking them down the field one play at a time. It just wasn't, this wasn't good. No, he definitely wasn't good. And, um, what, you know, I rewatched the game again today and it's, it's hard to think about like how many interceptions he had, but didn't count like the one in the red zone on that one play where on the first pick he had, um, where he overthrew Keenan, there were, there were two interceptions on that play. One got called back. There was a third that landed right in front of a linebacker that could have been caught, um, where his arm got hit, but man, it, like that game, he could have easily had close to four or five different interceptions. He was he was just off, and uh, this is the game that the Chargers really came from a big letdown with that game in uh, Green Bay against Green Bay, where they dominated for four quarters against a really good football team, and then go up against the Raiders and completely shit the bed like they did. It was really hard to watch. You know. I thought I think what made that game really hard to watch was that I felt like they really controlled the game for the most part and basically dominated the game for most of the game. Everybody except Rivers basically, well, Rivers and the offensive tackles basically dominated that that game from start to finish. And Rivers just kept giving them opportunities. And he had three picks, two more that were called back. I think there were a couple more that probably could have been picks, like you mentioned. He could have easily had six or seven interceptions in that game, certainly five. So I mean, he just, he was out of sync from the very beginning. Um, Timing was off, wasn't hitting his, wasn't hitting guys in stride. Even the first throw, he completed a a pass to uh, Eckler on the first play of the game that was about a 15 or a 20 yard gain over the middle. And he threw Eckler open, but he threw the ball into a spot that was surrounded by three Raiders, three Raiders players. And he, he fit it in there, but it was one of those throws that when you see it from, Behind the offensive line, it was one of those throws where you're like, oh, my God, he's lucky he completed that because Eckler was not open when he let that ball go, and he just trusted him to get to that spot, and that easily could have been tipped and picked or you know, knocked down or whatever. So that, that even that was a risky throw. As good as the throw was, it was extremely risky, and it just seemed like he was taking chances and ignoring open receivers and pushing the ball in the tight windows constantly. Yeah, and on that last drive, there were a lot of stuff – open underneath that Rivers just completely neglected to even look at. And he wanted to get basically all the yards in one throw, even though they had three timeouts, one minute left, you know, all they needed was a field goal. Just need to get in field goal range, but he just completely pushed it. And even on that second and last drive where they drove down methodically and wasted a lot of clock, a lot of that drive was extended because a lot of the penalties that happened, a lot of different pass interference and offsides, there were a lot of different things that the Raiders were doing wrong, but, um, you know, in the end, they just couldn't capitalize. There was a lot of good play from the Chargers, um, and, I, and I agree with you. I think Rivers and both the tackles really were a big letdown. Um, it was, it's tough that Russell Okun couldn't stay healthy long enough. Uh, hopefully he's okay for the rest of the season, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a weird spot to be in right now. Yeah, definitely a weird spot to be in right now, and I see uh... – Hey, it's T-Man saying all the problems start at Trent Scott, but Trent Scott is a big part of the problem. But, I mean, even if Teddy gets back on the field, he's still a problem. And uh, Pipkins, I heard people saying they thought Pipkins played well last week. I didn't think he was all that great. He did pretty well in the run game, but I thought he really struggled with pass protection. So they they don't have, if Okung isn't healthy and can't go, they don't have an NFL tackle on the roster right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I think there are some flashes there from Pipkins. And like I said before the season started, I really thought they might benefit more from playing him at right tackle if he's part of the future to get him those snaps now and see what happens. Because I don't think Tevi and Scott are part of the future at all. I'm not sure Pipkins is, but I know Tevi and Scott are. So I'd rather see Pipkins out there just to see what you get out of him over these next seven games and to see if they can... um, to see if they can kind of develop him and get him ready to play more next season in a, in a, in a more meaningful role. So tackles are a huge problem. Um, and it's obvious Rivers doesn't trust them and he's making mistakes because of it. So it, it kind of filters through every level of the offense at this point. 
and I agree with left to tip. He says Rivers was staring down receivers in the Raiders game. He was doing it constantly. So how do you feel? Uh, oh, here it is. Luis Miguel asks, if Rivers retires, would you consider trading for Cam? Cam Newton. Uh, yeah, Cam Newton, I know. Um, I've really never been a fan of Cam, to be honest with you. Um, I know he's a big, strong guy. He's physically talented. I've just never been a fan. I don't feel like you can count on him to be accurate when you need him to or make good decisions with the football. And I feel like I feel like his body is much older than he is, like chronologically speaking. He's been beat up so badly and taken so many hits and just been abused that I don't know how much football he has left in him, and I don't know if you can trust him to stay healthy. So I, I would stay away from that. That would be that would be me. That would be my decision, I should say. If I were if I were to let go, I would stay away from, from Cam. I just don't think that's the way to go. I think if you're going to make a quarterback change, I see uh, Tales of Joshua, or actually that was, yeah, it was Tales of Joshua saying, Coupon Tom would start Tyrod. We all know it. Um, you know, I, I was having this conversation on Twitter earlier today with somebody, a couple of listeners, talking about whether or not they can win with Tyrod. And I'm not sure that they can, but I think if they went in the next season with Tyrod as a starting quarterback, that probably means they've drafted a quarterback somewhere in the first couple of rounds, and they're working on developing um, a young quarterback behind Tyrod. I think Tyrod is a transitional answer. I don't think he's a long-term answer. And if they get somebody you know, high-profile in the earlier middle part of the first round, I wouldn't be opposed to one year of Tyrod with the understanding that, hey, you're going to have to earn your snaps, and you've got this guy bleeding down your neck. I think... That's the way to go. Um, and no, no Mariota. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're answering all the questions back to back to back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, no, I agree with Cam. I think uh, if you would have asked me the question four years ago, three years ago, it would have been a lot closer and I would have had to think about it a little bit more. But yeah, Cam, and somebody said it, Cam looked, yeah, that ship has sailed. He looks broken. That's exactly what he looks like. He does not look like the same Cam Newton we saw four or five years ago. So I would say no to Cam Newton. Uh, that wouldn't be the right direction to go in. They got to draft a quarterback at that point. Uh, Mariota is definitely not the answer. Um, I think they're probably close. Who would you rather? Uh, but the uh, the next name for Michael Bridgewater. I'd rather have Teddy Bridgewater out of all those names. Yeah, I've kind of come around on Bridgewater. I've never really. I mean, he's a talented mm -hmm. kid, but he's never really showed it consistently and never really stayed healthy. He's looked really good this year for the Saints, so that'd be somebody that I'd be open to. I think he kind of fits that. He's kind of a pocket passer, but he can move around and run and pick up plays, pick up yards with his legs. I think that's kind of what what they need right now. Um, they need they need somebody who can. I, and I'm going to steal this line from somebody on Twitter. I don't remember who it was, so I apologize if you're listening right now, and, and I don't give you credit for it. But Rivers is really good when Plan A works, but when he need Plan B, C, or D it's not really working, meaning if things break down, he's probably going to make a mistake. And you need somebody who can improvise and make plays when plays, when plays start to break down. So I am I think it's probably time to move on from Rivers. Um, and You're talking about you're talking about moving on from Rivers after the season? I, yeah, I am. Hmm. Do you not agree? No, not yet. I mean, I know it's uh, it's been a bad couple weeks, and I know that uh, a lot of people think his arm shot and everything. But no, I, I would give it till the end of the year. I think um, there's a chance they can run the table, and there's a chance that he's still got a little bit. But I'm not I'm not quite on the bus to let him sail quite yet. But it's really close. I mean, if they went a different direction, I wouldn't blame him. He's been really bad so far. But I just want to see how the season plays out and how they do. Um, I see. Yeah, I mean, I can go both ways. I just feel like they're hanging on for the sake of hanging on at this point. And I think um, I don't think he's making the difference that he used to make. I think there was a time there for a while where they were not a very good football team and he was going to be the difference in two to four games that were going to push them over the top and give them a shot at the playoffs. And now it feels like those games are going in the other direction because of him in a lot of cases. So I, I, 
I'm leaning strongly towards replacing him after this year. I see a question from uh, Spencer Carpen asking, "What's the percent chance that, that that they move on from Rivers or that Rivers is a starting quarterback at the end of the year?" Uh, I'm going to say fifty fifty, and I'm going to say fifty fifty because we've talked about this before. I would not be surprised if he's already indicated to them that he's at least considering retiring. And if he continues to take a beating behind this line and they don't run the table and they don't make the playoffs, I would not be surprised at all to see him retire. I just feel like it's just really strange that a team that values their quarterback as much as the Chargers do and say they do, that there hasn't been more chatter openly about his extension, either from his camp or from the team's camp. And that kind of is indicating to me that maybe he's considering not coming back and that they're keeping it quiet and they're in a wait and see mode with him. And that's kind of, that's the place I'm in right now. So I'm going to put a 50, 50. Um, I think if he wants to come back, they'll have him back more than likely, but I'm not sure he wants to come back or will want to come back depending on what happens with the season. Yeah, no, 50, 50 is probably about right. And that's probably where I'm sitting right now too. Um, Nathan asks about who we like in this QB class. We talked about Burrow a little bit, but I haven't got there yet with quarterbacks. Have you got there yet? I haven't started studying anybody yet. Yeah. I've seen a little bit of Burrow, obviously seen some of Tua. Um, I was a big fan of um, – I'm blanking on his name. From? Um, the kid from Oregon. Why am I blanking on his name? Um, Justin – Herbert. Herbert, yeah. I can't believe I forgot his name. That's right. I was a big fan of his going into last year, and I feel like he hasn't made a lot of progress, but there might be some value there with him if you can get him a little bit later. Um, talented kid, another kid who can run around, make plays with his arms and his legs. Um, I'd be okay with that, I think. And I think you might be able to get him a little bit later. I think Burrow and uh, Tua are going to be the first two to go, and Herbert might slip a little bit, depending on how things go. Yeah. And uh, let's see, there was another question. Oh, uh, from Ivan, do you think Gordon would now accept the original Chargers offer, or do you see him leaving LA? The original offer was what 10 million a year? That was the report, it was uh, four years, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 million. Yeah, um, I do not think he will take their offer. I think Melvin firmly believes that he is every bit as good as guys like Gurley and um. And Zeke, and I think he expects to get paid like them, and I don't think they're going to pay him like like that, and I don't think they should pay him like that. So, um, yeah, I think he's gone. I, I unless they franchise him, just to screw with him and try to trade him, or you know, be vindictive, which wouldn't surprise me with this organization. <laughs> I think he's gone. I don't think I don't think there's an extension in the works that's going to work on both sides based on how things played out this offseason. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think there's a chance he comes back, and I, I don't think that offer comes back on the table. To be honest with you, I don't think the Chargers offer him back to ten million. I think it's gone down, and um, I think they end up moving on from him. Uh, let's see what else we got here. It's all Chargers related, by the way. Um, That's good. It yeah, it's a Chargers podcast, I don't right? Know. Well, they, we can talk about anything really. What do you think about Jalen Hurts? Um. You know, I wasn't a fan of his uh, when he was in Alabama, and I felt like he couldn't really throw the ball, and he was rel- too reliant on his legs. I still think there's something about that Oklahoma offense that makes things really easy on quarterbacks that may not necessarily necessarily translate to the NFL. Uh, they throw into some really big windows. Guys are wide open all the time. Um, so I'm not sure how Hurts will handle smaller windows, but I'm warming up to him. Um I think he's a better passer than I gave him credit for heading into the season. So I'm kind of looking forward to watching tape on him this off season to see how, to see how he's throwing the ball. Cause I've only seen bits and pieces of him. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Uh, definitely warmer to him than I was last year. Uh, looks pretty good so far, but you know, we haven't really done any of the big tape diving yet. So uh, that'll come in the off season. And yeah, uh, says the big 12 plays zero D. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of, Defense is an abstract con- concept in the Big 12. Yeah. It's not an actual phase of the game. Right. So that, that plays a big role in, that, in those quarterback success for sure. Yep, definitely. Um, let's see. Do you think it's Chase Young or a quarterback at one? I think it's a quarterback. I think two is going number one. 
you think Tua's going number one? I do, yeah. Um, because we're talking about Bengals, Dolphins. Who else are we talking about? Redskins up there. Well, anyway, Red, the Redskins just took a quarterback, so they're yeah, not going to take one. Right. But um, Cincy and Miami are definitely playing for Tua. They're taking for Tua. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, you know, I something tells me that we might be surprised by the order the order the quarterbacks are taken in. Um, there have been a lot of knocks on Tua and Burrow because they're quote unquote small for NFL quarterbacks, um, and I kind of wonder if that if um, Herbert might be number one or number two just because he's bigger and stronger. And Tua has had ankle injuries the last two years that were pretty severe and just had surgery. So teams might be a little hesitant to take a guy who's a little smaller and runs around the way he does. Mm. So I, I kind of wonder, I mean, Tua is Tua's getting all the hype right now, but those big prototypical NFL quarterbacks, teams tend to gravitate towards them once the draft process starts. So you're thinking Herbert might go above Tua? Is that what you're telling me? I think I think I could see him going number one or number two if he has a really good combine and people just fall in love with his size. No. I, I don't see that happening at all. At all. I've got Tua Burrow one, two. I think Tua is the most exciting and probably the most um, – well, he's the most exciting. Burrow is probably the most NFL-ready in terms of the offense that he plays in and the, um, the kind of throws that he's making in that offense right now. Um, and we're talking with still like a month, month and a half left in the college season. So we're way early yeah. on this. We don't usually get into draft talk. This no, uh-uh, uh-uh. No. Um, but you think a quarterback over Chase Young though, right? I would think so, especially if the Dolphins or the Bengals. I mean, you never know what the Bengals, they seem to screw up everything. So, <laughs> You never put it past them, but I think if they're in a position to draft a quarterback, one, two, or three, I would think they probably will. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Let's see who uh, is from Kwame. Who else on the staff needs to be fired, Jamie? Uh, Gus, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm just that. The soft zone defense, the four-man rush, uh, asking Thomas Davis to cover wide receivers in the middle of the field. There are just all kinds of problems with that defense. And I know a lot of people have said, well, he's missing Derwin. And, you know, he's missing Phillips, and he's missing two key parts in the middle of that defense. And that's true. But at the end of the day, that soft zone, that's what burned them in, um, that's what burned them in, in New England in the playoffs. It's what's burned them consistently throughout the season. It certainly hurt them at the end of the game against the Raiders. So I think I think Gus is the guy that has to go, and I think you're probably uh, they'll probably hire from within because it's what they do. So I would think they'll probably hire they'll probably either promote Ron Milas, which I would be on board with, or I know I'm going to screw up his name. Is it Griff or Giff Smith, the defensive line coach? Yeah, I think one of those guys will be promoted most likely if they get rid of. Yeah. Um, if Gus. they get rid of Gus. Right. And I, I would I would fire the offensive line coach. I don't even know what his name is, but I'd fire him. <laughs> Whatever his name is, he's out. He <clears throat> sucks. I don't need to know his name. He's just bad. Yeah, no, man, I'm with you. Um I, I could yeah. I, I think I think Wiz and Gus have kind of run their course. Uh, I think it's time to get some fresh blood in there. Um I mean we saw week one what happened with Steichen and uh how he was able to kind of revitalize that offense a little bit and even um, even on Sunday, I don't think he was as bad as people were giving him credit for. But, um, you know, Ron Miles deserves an NFL job sooner rather than later. So I would definitely uh, promote him before he gets scooped up by another team. And, um, I mean, is Gus Bradley moving the needle anymore? I mean, I thought in the playoffs last year and late, late last year when he was running that big nickel, I thought that was pretty inventive and um, – I, I thought it was impressive that he kind of went away from what he usually does. And, man, it seems like uh, he's back to his old soft shell, uh, same old predictable self. And just the player rotations in general suck. And I don't know <clears throat> if uh, Anthony Lynn takes some of that blame, too, with uh, running a guy like Thomas Davis out there 100% of the time all the time. It's it's all done, you know. I you know it was exciting when we had 
veteran uh, coordinators in Gus and in Wiz, but they've all just kind of petered out here, and uh, it's time to get new. And um, they did it on the off- offensive side of the ball. Hopefully we see Gus and answer your question. Uh, now I'm on the, the Lagunitas IPA. Ruben, are you still drinking Moscow Mules, Jamie? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, good. Good. And so, yeah, no, I, we agree. I mean, I think he's probably the next to go. Um, now, what about um, – now, Lewis asked – oh, uh, Chris Bernhardt asked, will Steichen retain his job next year as offensive coordinator? Um, yeah, I think he will. Um, one, the Chargers are probably too cheap to go out and hire a new offensive coordinator who can actually make a big difference. <laughs> and two, they've been grooming him for that position, I think, for a while, and he's close with Rivers. So if Rivers stays, he stays for sure. And I think whether Rivers stays or not, Steichen will probably change. And I think, you know, watching that game, I don't know if you got this feeling, Garrett. I felt like Rivers and Steichen were really on the same page between from 20 to 20 early in the game on Thursday. But when they got inside the 20 and particularly inside the 10, I felt like Rivers was chaining into passes quite a bit, checking into passes and, um, kind of slowing down the momentum and the flow of the offense. It was, it happened last week in green Bay, I thought, and I thought it happened quite a bit against the Raiders this week where they just lost their flow and they lost their tempo and the momentum. And I felt like rivers was checking out a running place and getting them into passes. And when they got into the running plays, they scored. So kind of wonder what that offense might look like without rivers having the autonomy to check in and out of plays at win. Yeah, and yeah I, yeah, I agree with you with Steichen. I mean, I thought <clears throat> I thought Rivers was definitely taking it upon himself inside the 20s in the red zone. And um, I don't think it was a bad called game. I think the last, whatever it was, 16, 17 plays where they didn't complete a, a, a pass at all, I don't think that was on Steichen. I think that was more on Rivers than it was Steichen. Um, and I thought they dominated offensively throughout that whole game. I don't think there was that big of an issue. I think Rivers and the tackles, like we mentioned earlier, were the biggest issue. And so um, I think he still kept the offense simple, and uh, he got the ball to Henry and Keenan, and Eckler got some balls out of the backfield, and they utilized Gordon when they needed to. And when they needed to score a touchdown, they drove all the way down the field and got that t- that Eckler touchdown late in that game. So, yeah, I think Steichen has done enough. I mean, obviously it's a small sample size. We've got two games to – to talk about him on, but um, I think it's been enough to say that he's probably going to be offensive coordinator next year. Uh, the chemistry is definitely there with him and Rivers. Um, so I will say yes. I will agree with you there. Uh, Michael says, are there any QBs like Lamar Jackson next year? He's really improved this year. Now, um, I'll go ahead and um, pat myself on the back as I'm uh, literally touching myself on the back. Um Lamar Jackson, my QB2, I had a first-round grade on him. Jamie, you did not, but did you see any Lamar Jackson comps this year while watching college football? Um, I've, I've been coaching softball for the last two months, so <clears throat> I've been watching college football in bits and pieces and mostly watching um, ASU when I do watch full games. But from what I've seen, I think the two guys who are most closely comped to Lamar Jackson are probably Tua. And the Jordan Love kid out of Utah State, who I haven't seen a lot of, but plays a similar game. And um, he's a freshman, so he's not available in draft. But uh, uh, Jalen Daniels from from ASU, watch that kid. He's going to be really good. I think he's going to be special. He's a true freshman, 17 years old. I think he's 175 pounds soaking wet. And he's just clutch and makes big throws and big runs when he needs to. That kid gets bigger and stronger, and they surround him on offensive line. He's going to be really good in a couple years. All right, let's just fire through some of these questions. Ivan Aragon, biggest surprise on the team so far, Jamie? Positive or negative? Biggest surprise? Um, yep. Uh, I would say, well, I would say the biggest surprise, positive right now, is probably Scott Questenberry. The way he's played, uh, I think he's been a huge a stabilizing factor in the middle of that offensive line. And I feel like since he was inserted in there, um, a lot of those a gap blitzes have become less of a problem. They've been picking up blitzes, passing guys off. The interior of the line has been helping each other out more frequently. The communication is better, and I feel like Feeney and Schofield have been better with him in the middle. So, I would go 
I would certainly, uh, yeah, I go with Scott Questenberry. It's a small sample size, but he's played really well. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest surprises is that the Chargers actually played Forrest Lamp for a couple games and he got to start. Um, didn't work out very long, but uh, that might be the biggest surprise for me because I never thought he'd see the field, but he eventually did, uh, which was good. And yeah, Scott Questenberry has been a real surprise recently. I, you know, um, Unfortunately, Dan Feeney didn't do as good as he did last week, but I would say he's really improved that offensive line for sure. I agree with you. Um, I think the other surprise for me, and I don't know if you caught this um, during the game, but I, you know, we've been complaining about Kaiser White not playing. Kaiser White has passed uh, uh, Terry Nwosu as the starting Sam linebacker. And it was Sam and Nuosu uh, was basically just playing uh, like a rush end, like a third. He's their third rusher. And he's coming in in some packages, but that surprises me because you know they love Nuosu as that Sam linebacker, and they were trying to get him on the field as much as they could. And now what we're seeing is him and Bosa and Ingram on the field in sub packages, and that is a deadly three man rush combination. My God, if they could ever get anything at all out of Broughton or um, Tillery. No, Tillery. <laughs> He's been so invisible, I forgot his name. <laughs> if they could ever get anything out of, at all out of Broughton or Tillery, um, they'd have a pretty mean pass rushing sub package because, man, the, having Ingram and, and the Wilson and Bosa on the field at the same time on third and long is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have seen Kaiser White out there. It's been a nice little surprise. Finally, seeing 44, an ugly number, man. Uh, it, he stands out like a sore thumb, but, um, yeah, I'm glad he's able to make it on the field. Uh, Royce H., any notable free agents from other teams the Chargers could go after this offseason? I haven't even looked. Have you? I haven't, to be honest. All right, I'm going to pull up a list. Let's see if you like anybody. Let's see. Obviously, you got to look at tackle first, right? Uh, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Whitworth. Uh, nope, he's 38. Uh, Anthony Costanzo, he's 32. Wow, there's a lot of old, <laughs> there's a lot of old tackles available. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, 38. Anthony Costanzo, 32. Calvin Beecham, 30. Brian Balaga, who's 31. Marcus Gilbert, who's 32. Jason Peters, who's 38. Damar Dotson, who's 34. Mike Remmers, who's 31. I mean, <laughs> Uh, you'd have to get a old aged veteran. The only, the youngest and highest ranked tackle is the one, two, three, four, fifth best tackle, which is Greg Robinson. Who's 27. Oh, he's bad. Yeah. And he's not very good. <laughs> and he's the fifth ranked tackle. If we go down six, seven, eight, it's Daryl Williams, the Carolina tackle. Who's not much better. At right tackle who's 28. So um so far not so oh Jack Conklin. Look at this. Jack Conklin's available. He's pretty good. He is pretty good. Did you see his press conference where he uh he yelled at himself? No. Oh, okay. Man, go go watch that. Is that okay. Jack Conklin? Am I thinking of the right guy? Anyway, no, you're he... thinking of Taylor the one. Oh, is it oh shit, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. It's the one. So anyway, Conklin's available, and he's 26. So there you go, right tackle the future, right there. there we go. Go. They don't have to worry about it. They they sign him and move him to center. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> let's see what other questions we have. Thoughts on Chargers trading Casey and Ingram for picks and or offensive tackle this season? Would you uh, trade Casey Hayward or? Melvin Ingram for picks? I consider it, but I don't think Chargers will. Um, I would, I would definitely consider Ingram because I think Nuoso is ready to take that next step with regular snaps. Casey's a little tougher because they don't really have anybody to fill in for him, um, so they'd probably have to draft a corner early. And then you'd be looking at needing potentially a quarterback and maybe another defensive tackle and two offensive tackles, and a right guard early. So that's bad. That'd be a problem. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
What else have we got? Are we all caught up now? Will Lamp um, make the 53 next year? Um, Nathan asked if the is set to replace Ingram when his contract is up. Mm, good question. I yes? think he is. I think, I think they're grooming the Wosu to be that, that Leo position. I think it suits him perfectly because he can just focus on setting the edge and getting upfield against the pass. And they can move him around and create matchups with him and Bosa, just like they do with uh, Bosa and Ingram. Um, and I don't think he's suited to playing the same position they apparently drafted him to play. So I, I think when Gordon, when Ingram's contract is up, I think there's probably a pretty good chance he's going to be 31, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think they'll probably let him go, maybe offer him a smaller deal with the plan. Like, you know, we'll, we'll make him an offer, but if he doesn't want it, we'll, we'll let him walk. And then making the most of that, that starting Leo. I think that's the perfect fit for him and the best use of his skill set. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about it a couple of weeks now that uh, once Ingram went down, the Wosu kind of stepped in as that uh, new Leo. And he has looked good this season. Man, the Wosu's taken a, a big step for sure. Uh, you, do you think Forrest Lamb's going to make the 53 next year? Chris asked. I don't. I don't. You think they're going to cut him? I think, the, I think they'll cut him. Um, I think the problem here is that he's entering the last year of his rookie deal. Um, he has been hurt for two out of his first three years. I think there was an issue with the chart, with the coaches having faith in him to begin with, which is why it took basically an emergency to get him on the field in the first place. And I think he basically provided confirmation bias for them by getting hurt again and showing that they can't rely on him. So I think they might try to release him or – cut him but i wouldn't be surprised if they resigned schofield i didn't think he was a part of the you mean um, lamb oh you want you think they'll resign schofield i think they will because i think he'll come cheap i don't think he was part of the future plans but i think he might have played his way into it because they seem to think he's really good and they, i don't think they trust lamb <laughs> and he stays on the field that's a plus i guess no i think they're keeping lamb i i, I think they invested too much in him to give up on him now I don't think they end up cutting him. Um, okay. I think we caught up on all the questions. Yeah, we're good. So if anybody else has any other questions, feel free to send them in. Um, the original plan tonight was to have some guests on. Uh, of course, Jamie was supposed to be with me and join me live on the stream and not just live via uh, FaceTime like he is on my phone. But um we were going to have some guests on and um, we we're going to have some listeners on too. We were going to hope to have a couple of you guys on here to talk with us, but uh, things did not work out as we had hoped. Uh, we had some major issues with uh, the new changeover from YouTube. So I um, uh, just want to thank, um, we're going to have John Gennaro on who uh, of course, if you guys remember him, he was the uh, head editor at Bolts from the Blue he was the guy who kind of gave us our start at Bolts from the Blue. Well, he not kind of, he was. Um, we started the Lightning Round podcast on the site at a uh, site called Cover 32 Chargers, which I don't know even exists. Do you know, Jamie? Uh, I that... think it still does. Oh, it does? Okay. I think so. It might... so we started over there. And then um, early on, uh, John liked an article that we had I had written and um, hired me on the from Bolts from the Blue. Uh, then hired Jamie on too, liked his writing style. So we both got brought on. We moved the podcast over to the Bulls from the Blue. So it would have been nice to talk to him and uh, thank him for what he would that he's done. And um, not much of a Chargers fan as of today since the move, but uh, definitely an integral part of our uh, history here at Bulls from the Blue and uh, the Lightning Round podcast. This is episode number 200, if you guys didn't uh, catch the title or uh, know what we were doing. And um, we had a couple other guys scheduled. Um, we were going to have Ricky Henney on, who um, was formerly of Chargers.com. Uh, Chris Hayry, who was uh, currently at Chargers.com, uh, was uh, thinking about joining us. The team is traveling today, so uh, he, he was going to try, but uh, probably not going to be able to make it. And uh, we asked a couple of players, and because of the travel day for the guys, because they're going to be playing in Mexico City soon, they're off to Colorado. But um, – you know, just a big thank you to all you guys for listening. Um, all the people like John, um, Richard Wade was a big part of it. 
uh, appreciate uh, those two because honestly, Jamie and I have just been able to do our thing. No matter what um, thing we've ever brought up, whether it was like um, a bit idea or a um, uh, kind of a concept for uh, an episode, they were always willing to just let us do whatever we wanted to. They've never nixed any idea that we've ever done. So we've been able to be creative with those guys. So thanks to John and Richard. Um, we were also going to have Kyle Posey on. Um, uh, he's actually with the 49ers now. And their uh, site over at SB Nation, I can't remember the name of that uh, website, but um, he's working with the Niners. And uh, they got a game tonight. So he couldn't make it. But uh, we had a lot of things planned today. And it didn't quite work out. But um, Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Jamie, appreciate you for uh, being on FaceTime with me and still doing this regardless. So thank you. Of course. I wouldn't have missed it. I just wanted to point out, too, that John G. is the one that moved us to the podcast network that we're currently on. Yeah. Um, helped us kind of, you know, not that we're making a killing, but kind of helped us um, make some money off the podcast off of all the hours that we spent on this. So, yeah. Thank you for John, you know, getting us on Bolts from the Blue, getting us on our podcast network, letting us be creative, all very important parts of what, of what we've done here. And um, maybe next time, maybe another time we can have some of those guests. Yeah. Um, they all want nice to be on. Nice so we can we have those connections and we can do that. And, and uh, we appreciate all of you for listening. So thank you guys all for listening every week. Like we always say, without listeners, there's no point in having a podcast. So, right. Uh, we really appreciate you guys listening and supporting us and, you know, spreading the good word about what we're doing here. Um, you guys make it worthwhile. So thank you guys. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm sure we'll get all these guys back on and we'll do something with them. And, um, and uh, things just did not work out today, but we're still here and we're, uh, we're still doing it. We could take some more questions before we wrap this thing up. I think we'll probably do an hour. We're about at, 47 minutes so we got like 15 more so um whatever you guys want to ask we got about 15 more minutes jamie you, you cool with that yeah hang absolutely. For 15 more minutes okay so you know we'll hang around and um for those of you guys that are watching and miss part of it we will definitely uh, repost this as a podcast uh, it'll sound terrible because jamie's on speakerphone but still we will try to do what we can do and uh, we'll still release it as a podcast. So we just, I mean, 200 episodes is a pretty big deal. I know that um, it's basically us just never stopping to do it and being, um, uh, what's the word? We're, we're being um, stubborn enough to just keep going. And mm -hmm. uh, we've done 200 episodes and uh, we just thank you guys for listening because uh, we've been through some bad seasons and some bad drafts and uh, some good seasons and some good drafts. So Thanks for sticking with us this long, and uh, we appreciate all you guys because, um, quite honestly, we, we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast if we didn't have anybody listening. And the fact that we are um, the biggest Chargers podcast out there is a big deal. So thank you so much um, for Frank uh, for the, asking about how do we donate. Um, if you guys really want to donate, and again, we, we, you do not have to donate. We've never been about you know pay to listen to us. That's never been about what we've been about so we've just always released a podcast but if you wanted to donate uh we have a paypal and we have a venmo it's both lightning round you guys can donate however little or much you want to but obviously no pressure to do that so uh, don't feel like you have to just because you're watching this uh if you want to know how to donate sorry to cut you off there Garrett. yeah no go um, for it. you can go to our our twitter page um our home page on twitter and there's a there's a link up there with ways to donate. It's pinned up on the top of the page. So, yeah, uh, at lightning underscore round on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, I've got the PayPal. We got the PayPal and Venmo pinned up there, so you'll see it. Um, let's see. Do you uh, tales of Joshua? Do you know any Charger players or coaches that listen to the podcast? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, let's see. What's the most painful loss for you both personally from Spencer? Um, just to add on to what Joshua asked there, we've been told that Telesco has listened to the pod and we know several of the players listen to the pod. Uh, 
no specifics on players, but we've had a few players on the show, so I'm assuming they probably listened. And we've had a couple players kind of banner back and forth with, forth with us on Twitter a few times after criticizing their play or complimenting their play. So uh, they are very aware, I think, of what we say on the podcast, uh, both in terms of players and, and the front office. Yeah, we actually, and I was I was keeping it ominous, Jamie, but since you're getting specific, uh, we, we I did... I just mentioned Telesco, but I, I didn't mention the players. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we did the um, serial spoof on uh, who killed the Charger season, um, we know that uh, it was played in the locker room and that uh, there were definitely players listening to that episode. So that... We know for a fact that our our podcast has been played in the Chargers locker room. Uh, Telesco has definitely listened, and we know specific players have listened to it uh, on their own. So, yes, definitely. Um, so, Jamie, let's move on to the next question from Spencer. What is the most painful Chargers loss for you both personally? We have to pick one. Um, yeah. There are a lot. <laughs> um, I would say – is there anything more painful well, than the Marlon McCree fumble? No, that's yeah. it's got to be it. It's got to be the Marlon McCree yeah. game. No, that's that, an that easy answer. That team was Super Bowl bound if they finished that game, I think. Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. That That is by far the worst. And that's we weren't even a podcast then, but that's definitely the most painful. Definitely. Uh, uh, who is your favorite Charger player ever from Chris Bernhardt? Uh, well, I grew up watching Sayo, uh, and – Mimicking Sayal. So I would say Sayal is my favorite player, but LT is also right there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's both Sayal and uh, LT. Rivers is probably up top five, but um, yeah. Yeah, no, that was a big deal. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Um, uh, I see a we'll question be- there that we are not going to answer, but I'm just going to say. This is a this is a no fly zone for relocation talk. Just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, left a tip about moving. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think that's you're right. what I was responding to. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess we, I, yeah, we don't talk relocation <clears throat> so much. We've done that so much. We did it when they moved. And we do it every time we get on any other show, podcast, radio show, anything. We got to talk about it. Yep. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's a fantasy football show, and they're, they're asking you about relocation. So it always it always pops up. Oh, yeah. No, it's the worst. Uh, do you think Rivers will re-sign or retire after the season? I mean, right now, I think he's leaning towards retirement. I think it's at least 50-50, if not um, slanted more in favor of him retiring. I just, I think that explains a lot about the two-year deal for Tyrod and the lack of talk about an extension for Rivers and just no urgency in resigning him. I just think that there's something, there's a conversation that was had before the season that um, where the, chart, the team was at least informed that Rivers is considering retiring. Just, just a gut feeling. Yeah, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. I think it's probably close to 50-50, but I feel like it's probably more 60-40 now that Rivers will retire, which just seems like it's getting tougher and tougher to muster these wins and to uh, come back from behind. And you feel like he's kind of starting to hit that decline a little bit. So uh, Robster's 52. Will either of you attend the home opener next season at the new stadium? I don't know. That's a long ways away. That is a long ways away, uh, but it's also during softball season for my my daughter. So um, <laughs> probably not, but yeah. I guess anything is possible depending on what kind of tickets are available and where they come from and how we get up there and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll see. It's possible, but probably not likely for me. Yeah. Yeah. So we got about five minutes, Jamie. Is there anybody else you want to uh, thank while we're out here? while we're doing this? Um, I, I just know. think I want to, I want to thank all the listeners again, everybody um, for supporting us. And I think um, trying to think, I think 
that's about it. I just really appreciate the listeners and everything they've done to keep us going and, and communicate with us and, and connect with us. I think that's huge. And it's why, um, I think it's why we keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we, we kind of thank the listeners and everything. Um, it's been, it's been a fun journey for 200 episodes. Everybody... Actually, there's one, other, there's one other person I want to thank. Okay. I want to thank my wife for putting up with us while we were doing this <laughs> podcast for so long where we weren't making any money. We were spending hours and hours and hours doing it. Um, the patience and the willingness to let me stick with something that I was passionate about and use it as my outlet, I think, was really important. And I think it's something that we both need to thank our wives for. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I, I agree. I echo that sentiment. Um, the family is definitely uh, very understanding that we can even now do it on a uh, a Monday night at four o'clock to five o'clock and just uh, get away and record these podcasts. Uh, appreciate them. Uh, everybody at the Bolts from the Blue, not just Richard and John, but um, you know all the help from you know Matthew Stanley and Stebbins and Ruben and uh, Kyle Posey and everybody else that's uh, joined us and helped us and Max and um, it's a really good group of guys over there and um, they've always been really supportive of us and um, you know, they've always wanted to tune in when we're doing it and uh, tell us what we think we got right or wrong at times. And um, we appreciate all of them and uh, everybody else that was going to join us today. I'm sorry that uh, we couldn't get you all on. And um I think that's all. I think that's it. I appreciate everybody listening right now. Everybody that tuned in for episode 200. Uh, we will repost this to the podcast. Uh, Jamie, any final words before we log off here? Uh, I just wanted to answer Spencer's question about the most annoying Chargers take we consistently see on Twitter that pisses us off the most. Okay. I don't know about you, but for me, it's the idea that you can't criticize Rivers or any Chargers player without being a hater. That drives me crazy. I think the worst thing for me is the guys who will tag players when you're um, being critical of them. When they take something like, hey, um, Rayshon Jenkins didn't make a good tackle, and then turning it into something personal, like, hey, fuck you, Rayshon Jenkins, at Rayshon Jenkins. It's like, that's not what I said. You can't take yeah. that and then turn that into what I said. No, I mean, I think it's fair for anybody to be critical of another player. Um, that's just being, you know, on Twitter and being able to analyze. But uh, when you make it a personal attack, like, hey, uh, great missed tackle, asshole, at Rayshon Jenkins. Like, that <laughs> that sucks. And um, Lightning round says, at Rayshon yeah, Jenkins. Exactly. Sucks at his yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's why. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> that is the absolute worst. And I fucking hate the people that do that. Yeah, that's a good way to get blocked, by the way. I've never uh, blocked anybody before in my life, but um, I've gotten really close to a couple people, and they're only the people that tag other players, and that's it. Uh, just real quick, uh, yeah. Frank just sent us a $100 donation, one of the guys who's on this this podcast. So thank you, Frank, for the donation. I appreciate it. We don't, don't usually mention the amount, but I just wanted to mention that Frank – was very generous and sent us a donation. So thank you. Thanks, Frank. We love you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, that does it. I think we're done. I think we're done. All right, guys. Thank you for everybody that tuned in today. We love you guys. Thank you for uh, chatting with us, sending us some great questions. Episode 200 in the books. Uh, wish we could have made it a little bit uh, more succinct and more crisp, but we did what we could. Uh, so uh, thanks again, everybody that tuned in. Thanks, everybody that continues to listen. Uh, we love every single one of you. Happy 200, Jamie. Happy 200. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>